Hey guys, I'm Chris Ord from St. Hedwig. Welcome back to the Faith Cave. It's Holy Week. That's what this week is. It's a big week. It's kind of the biggest week in our whole church year. So uh, things are a little different this week. First off, we don't have class. We wouldn't normally have class. We have a lot of other things in store for you. And by the end of this video, I'm going to lay them all out for you. But this is a, a special one. It's going to be for everybody, right? So whether you're in First Communion, or you're just in any SRE class, or you're in Confirmation, or beyond really, this is meant to be a way that you and your family can really get into Holy Week. All right, so gather the whole family, and let's do this thing. Let's go. All right, guys, so today we are going to play a game called Toe Wrestling. <laughs> And I know what it sounds like. That doesn't sound cool. It sounds really gross, but it's not. It's a fun game. How it works is you need a partner. So find a partner. If there's an odd number of people in your family, don't worry. You can play multiple rounds. You can play as many rounds as you like, really. Hopefully you like it a lot, so you'll play tons. How this is gonna work is you find a partner and then you grasp hands with them like this, right? So you'll be totally interdigitated, yes? Holding hands staring right into the other person's face. And remember, this is a competition. It's toe wrestling. It's intense, all right? So stare at them with that intense uh, sort of look in your face, right? And the goal here is whenever you say go, you say one, two, three, go, is you want to be able to touch the top of their foot with your toe, right? Tap, just one little tap. If you can touch the top of one of their feet with your toe, then you win. Now that sounds very simple, but they're trying to do the same thing. So what it ends up looking is almost like a nice, like a little, like a little toe dance as you spin around the room trying to tap each other's toes. Does that sound good? Yes, it can get intense. Find a place with lots of room if you want to do it outside or like in the center of the living room. You know, sometimes there's a little bit of flailing involved, so be careful for the furniture, but that's what we're going to do. All right? Sound good? Uh-huh. You can play two out of three if you want, or you can do a little round robin tournament in your family, but find out who the champion toe wrestler is in the room. All right, are you ready? Are you set? Go! All right, so who won toe wrestling? Was it uh, the youngest in the family? Was it the oldest? Was it grandma? Who, who won? I, I never know what you guys are saying, but I wish I knew. I wish I knew what demographic was best at toe wrestling. That'd be kind of interesting to learn. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about Holy Week. Holy Week is basically the biggest week of the entire year for our church. Not just the biggest, but it's the most important one. And it's one of my favorite weeks of the year, at least when it comes to church, right? But I have a question for you guys. What I want you to do is go around in your family and share what your favorite week of the year. It doesn't just have to be church, but maybe it's the week of Christmas. Maybe it's the week of your birthday or the first week of school. Or maybe there's a week where your whole family goes out on some vacation that you really love. But go ahead, take a moment, share what your favorite week of your whole year is. Go. All right, thanks for sharing. So whatever your favorite week of the year is, is it's probably a week where you do something really memorable or really special to you, right? Like my favorite week of the year, me and my family, we go to a place called Shaver Lake. We spend the whole week there and it's just me and my family and it's just wonderful. I love it. It's so simple. We don't even do much. We just hang out on the water the whole time, right? But that's special to me because we have those moments together as a family. When it comes to Holy Week, it's kind of a similar thing. Holy Week is one of the most important weeks for all of creation because so many important things happen, right? First, we start by celebrating Jesus during Palm Sunday when all of Jerusalem came out and waved their palm branches around, right? And then we have the Last Supper, the first institution of the Eucharist where Jesus gathered his closest friends and told them some really important things. And then on Friday, what do we have? Jesus is crucified. He dies on the cross for you and for me and for everybody, which proves once and for all just exactly how much God loves us. Wow, crazy. And then on Sunday, of course, he comes back. He rises again from the dead, and so will we all, and get to enter heaven with him on the last day. Pretty great week, pretty crazy week, right? But when you really look 
at what happened during Holy Week, something really interesting pops up. It says after Jesus entered Jerusalem and there were all those crowds, he did something. It says he hid away from the crowds. It says he actually hid from the crowds, which is uh, really relevant to us right now, right? Because that's what we're all doing. I'm here at my home, hiding away from the crowds. We're all kind of stuck at home, just with our families. But that's what Jesus did too. He hid away and was surrounded only by his loved ones, the apostles, the people closest to him. And he did something really special. He knew that these were his last days with them before he was going to die on the cross. And he used that time to really lay out some of the most important things to them and to tell him the things that they really needed to know. What we're going to do now is we're going to take an opportunity to do the very same thing. We're already hiding from the crowds, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to take that same time to make our own weeks holy the same way Jesus did by sharing with each other what's most important, by sharing the feelings that we have for each other, the feelings of love. The apostles needed Jesus to push that pause button in order for them to spend that time together, right? Sometimes we need somebody else to tell us to do it, right? We all know exactly how much everybody loves each other, but it's another thing to take that time and to share it. And that's what this is. This is, this is me taking, telling you to take this time to share it, all right? So how this is gonna work, everyone's gonna grab a piece of paper. Each family member should write their name on the top of one of the papers. Then take those papers and place them around the house. If you can't put each one in its own room, then that's fine. Just try and space them out around one or two different rooms. But just make sure that each paper has its own space in the house. And then what I want you to do is take some time as a family and you're gonna each go to each other's papers, one at a time, right? So I would go to my wife's paper and what I'm gonna do is write on it how I feel about her. Tell her how much I love her. Take that time to do that, right? And then I'll go to my son's paper and write that to him, and then to my daughters, and then to my babies, which I'll have to read to him, but that'll be fine. All right, and each person will do that. They'll all take turns rotating around the house to the different papers and writing affirmations, writing how much you love them, writing whatever feelings that you have for them. Take this time, make it holy, and share with each other what's most important, just like what Jesus did, right? He knew those were his last days. These, these are not our last days. But these can be holy days, too, if we, if we make it, by sharing with each other, all right? So go ahead, what you're gonna do now is you're gonna write your names on those papers, spread them around the rooms, and then everybody go around and write the different affirmations of love on it. If you can't write, no big deal. You could just draw, or you could do any way of letting people know, all right? No worries if you can't write yet, no big deal. All right, so we're gonna do that now. Jesus knew that his apostles and his friends needed that extra time together and needed to have that extra time with him before he was going to die on the cross, right? For him to say a lot of really special and important things to all of them. He knew that it was important that he said these things, right? So you guys probably already knew that your family loved you, but... Why do you think it's important that we say it? What's the difference between just knowing your family loves you and being able to hear it or talk about it? Let's share about that, all right? So just go around the room and share. What do you think the difference is between just knowing your family loves you and being able to share about it? That's gonna bring us to our closing prayer. So let's do that, huh? So here's what I would like to do for our closing prayer. If you could take all of the papers from earlier with the affirmations on them and place them somewhere everyone can easily reach, like a dining room table or like a piece of furniture like this, whatever you want to do. And have everybody sit around and just place their hands on it. And then I ask that one of the parents just say a really simple prayer, however long or short they want it to be, but one that does two things. One that they thank God for the love that he placed in our family. And two, that they ask God to help that love continue to grow and help us to continue to share that love, all right, with each other. Does that sound good? 
Yeah, parents, you got it? Good, I'm glad, all right? So go ahead and do um, that closing prayer now. Beautiful, and thank you for praying with me. I have a couple announcements now. First off, there's gonna be a couple different videos coming out this week. One for Good Friday, one for Holy Thursday, all right? And um, also, we're gonna send you out a Holy Week resource through the email. There'll be a link also um, in the description of this video if you want to go there. But it's gonna be a bunch of PDFs, one for each day of Holy Week. And it's gonna have sort of a reflection that you can do as a family and even a couple activities. Now, each of these is meant for all ages, meaning that you'll notice some of the activities may seem like it's a little older than your kids, and some activities might seem it's a little too young. You don't have to do all of the activities, just do the ones that seem to engage you guys the most. All right, does that sound good? Perfect. These resources were made by two very good friends of mine at the Faith and Family Collective, uh, Jillian Rhodes and Pam Hurwitz. If you haven't heard of them and what they do, it's really great. They make a lot of stuff that's just about helping the family come together, right, and to gather. That's their whole thing. And they were nice enough to make this resource and give it out to anyone they want for free, which I think is pretty cool. So a big shout out to them. Thank you so much from everybody at St. Hedwig. And with that, I would like to ask if you could please keep my family in your prayers. Know that all of your families are in mine. Continue praying for this church during this crazy time and really the whole world, right? As we all deal with this together, separately. And peace be with you. And I hope you all have a great Holy Week. All right, stay in touch. We're going to send out a ton of stuff to you guys. Have a great one. Bye. One last thing. I know for a lot of people, a big part of their worship is being able to give back on Sunday. And now that we can't go to Mass every Sunday like we'd like to, uh, that's a lot harder to do. So I've just put a, a link in the description down below. You can click that if you want to continue doing your normal Sunday giving uh, that you would regularly do, if you can. It's the perfect way to keep this church rolling even during this time and just to make sure that our ministry and all the other ministries are still here when we finally get to come back to church. Thank you so much for your generosity. Bye, guys. Have a great one.